This is part two of my ebook of the Raiders offensive playbook. A lot of people have been switching to this. It's one of the best offenses in the game just because it is so flexible. You have gun bunch, you have gun bunch tight end, you have gun trips tight end, even though it's called gun tray. It's trips tight end, guys. It's very powerful. We have gun tight and gun tight slots HP weak. It's so powerful. And I want to talk about gun bunch right now. I've done a full ebook on gun bunch already this year. It's the gun bunch offset ebook. If you want to watch it, it's great. Some of the stuff in there has been patched, but mostly still an amazing playbook. Gun Bunch is very similar to Gun Bunch uh, set, of course. And I today want to talk about something that has become popular within the last months of the game, basically. It is not something new, but there are some ways that you can use this, and there are some ways that you should not use this. And I want to kind of separate the two and make sure you only get the best route combos out of this. For starters, we need an ability for this. We need either Hot Trout Master on a quarterback, which pretty expensive or we need slot apprentice on a wide receiver we want him in either of the outside spots like this guy mike evans or if we want to go for number 18 t johnson i don't know who this guy is actually and then what you want to do is you want to come up with the bunch to the short side now how do you tell whether you're on the wide or the short side well if you look at the plays in here you can see where the ball is spotted based on the center if the center is more so on the left then ball is on the left on the right ball is on the right Simple as that. So now I'm going to call PA post. PA post is a play that I like to do this out of. On defense, we're just come, gonna come out and cover for a drop. We're going to put number 13 on a crosser, which you see right here. He he needs to have slot apprentice once again. I want to reiterate that. And then we're going to flip the play. Now, as you're going to see, we're still going to have that crossing route on the field. That crossing route stays. And this is where the beauty of this comes in. And now let's get into the actual set. We're gonna do this every time for every single setup that we're using. If you want to max protect, if you're gonna wanna get all the time in the world, you're going to, of course, block the tight end, block the running back. You're going to streak the slot wide receiver and you're going to put Govin on a hitch. Or you do it the other way around. Whichever you prefer. I generally like to do this. Then you want to double team the furthest outside rusher on the right side. And you're going to get all the time that you need. And you want to throw this crossing route. That is the money route on this play because that's, that gives you the most yards, obviously. Now, if that is covered with a user, we then look to hit the playmaker. Let's try to roll out a little bit to the right. Okay, if it's covered, then I'm just going to check it down to the playmaker. Now, of course... There was a zone there. If the user is all the way out covering that crossing route, there's not going to be a zone in the middle. And there are going to be a lot of yards that are to be had out there. And this basically is all the magic for the first setup. It is if you want to max protect, if you want to make sure that you do not get screamed at, and this is the play for you. It's very, very simple. A lot of pros have been running this. It's a simple concept, but it's difficult to stop because the crosser beats man and it gets into a nice soft spot between a lot of zones. The second setup that I want to talk about is a little bit more complicated, but similar idea. We're going to put our guy on the crossing route and flip the play once again so it looks like this. Then from now on, we want to put uh, our running back on an out route. We want to streak the slot wide receiver and we want to put Gubin on a slant. I like to block the tight end because the tight end on the flat does not do anything for me in this play. You can keep him on the flat if you want to, but I prefer the extra blocker in my opinion. Then I'm going to snap this ball and I'm going to just... Not throw anything besides the cross right here because I know that that's going to be open. But I want to talk about the reads in the replay. The first read that you obviously want to look for is going to be the running back on his out route. Like if we look right here, he's open. Like I can throw that right here. Boom. And I get a couple of easy yards. Very, very simple. Second read is going to be the slant. If we look at his spot on the field, like that's open right there. I'll throw that possession, catch it. Nice, easy 10 yards. We're snapped it at the 35. We're at the 45 yard now yard line now this is a first down and then if we wait all the time we have we use it to look that crossing right open that's of course a lot of yards so once again a very very simple rock combination first read is going to be the running back if he's open i suggest taking it unless you're a hundred percent sure that your opponent is not going to cover the crossing route. but we can just hit that right there and it's the easiest thing in the world second read is going to be the slant and if both of those things are covered chances are that the user is kind of is covering one of them uh, you're going to look to hit the uh, crossing route deep down the field. But for now, let's just throw this land. Take the nice and easy yards. Very, very simple. There are many things that you can do with this crosser backside. I generally just like to work with crossing routes over the middle of the field. Like this, for example. I like to streak Miller again. Put the tight end on a drag. Go in on an in route. And then just have a double drag kind of in route setup. Uh, that is very, very simple to dot out of it. It's You just need to use that crossing route because it is so versatile. And then with the bunch side, just have crowds, uh, routes going across the face of the cross and really just make your opponent choose which one he wants to use a guard like this right here. Just going to check it down. Going to truck and get up the field. 
very very simple the main thing that you need to be aware of is that you generally want this with the cross uh, with the bunch to the short side and then flip it over so one more time crossing rod right here and i'm just basically freestyling right here i'm not really sure what i want i just know okay i'm gonna throw the crossing rod and then i'll see what i'm kind of feeling and what my opponent is showing me but in general like this crossing rod is just so powerful and i don't need to make this video any longer most of the things that i'm running in bunch still work and i'll do a whole bunch section on how to score in the red zone because that's where i feel more comfortable talking about bunch because pretty much everything i've shown you i've shown i've shown you how to uh, run z spot i've shown you how to run dig return i've shown you how to run mesh spot a uh, bunch trail will get an entire video for itself because it's such a powerful play i really want to break it down same with y curl those two will be in separate videos because i like to use them in very unique ways and i think they deserve that extra time verticals i've talked about bench pitter i've talked about i want to make this video a little shorter so we're already done if you enjoyed what you saw please subscribe to the channel it would support me a lot like the video the algorithm likes it if my videos get support like that. And of course, I like it too. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one. Peace out.